Hey guys, it's me. Welcome to Friday. I have not been on and actually done a Q&A video in a really long time. So I'm pumped to do it tonight. Um, it's Thursday night and I'm about to go to bed right after this. But um, I want to record a short video to be up tomorrow. Hopefully I'm doing my best to get back to posting three times a week, which isn't always going to happen. But on slower, calmer weeks, I want that to definitely be a reality. So this week, three times. Woohoo. Um, all right, I hope you guys have had a great week. I hope that your kind of your summer is finally winding down after Labor Day and you're excited for fall and I definitely know I am. Um, it's been a little hot here, but I think it's going to get super cool or at least cooler this weekend and then hopefully continue to get cooler. I love winter, so I'm pumped about it. Alrighty, so hopping into things, there's a few questions on metabolism today um, and then one more about something else that we'll get to. But first questions first is, does our metabolism slow down as we age? Um, and I think that's, that's something we hear all the time. And especially, I know it's something I used to believe and be like, I never want my metabolism to slow down because I always want to eat this much. Um, and the thing about that is partly true, partly false. So essentially, if you think about metabolism, the reason why men tend to eat more than women is because they have more muscle mass. And that's a huge contributing factor to metabolism. Um, and so as we age, we tend, to use a little, we tend to lose a little bit of muscle mass. And that's where this like myth of the metabolism slowing down comes from. So yeah, if you don't, if like, you know, you're not exercising or maintaining your strength through um, any sort of resistance training, and that could simply be yoga, then you are, your metabolism is going to slow because more fat is going to replace lean muscle mass. So I would say that just comes down to taking care of yourself, continuing to exercise as you age, knowing that metabolism is more closely associated with lean muscle mass than it is age. It's just that as we age, our muscle mass tends to decrease and therefore our metabolism decreases. Um, okay. So keep doing strength training. Second question is, oh, the rule about d does everything, eat, like eating after seven, does everything turn to fat that you eat after seven? And that kind of ties into metabolism as well. That is 125% false. Um, and ultimately, I think why this myth even got perpetuated is because if you think about when usually like snacking occurs that's mindless um, or snacking occurs that we didn't intend to snack on or eat, that tends to happen at nighttime. And this is because we're usually sitting in front of the TV or in front of the computer or we're winding down from the day and that's when all of our cravings sit, when we're not as busy, right? Night times tend to be slower than during the day when we're at work or out and about or whatever. And so we tend to eat like carby or snacky, not so good for you, not so feel good, nourish your body foods. So I think that that's where a lot of this like don't eat after seven because that's going to cause weight gain. So it's not necessarily eating after seven. It's just the foods that are typically eaten after seven. Now, additionally, I also think that we tend to get snacky and tend to have all these cravings after seven for several reasons. One, either not eating enough throughout the day. And so your body, you haven't eaten enough throughout the day. All these sugar and carb cravings hit and that's because your body wants quick energy, which is going to come from refined carbohydrate and refined sugar. Secondly, typically if we've had a very stressful day, we tend to unwind at night and we typically like to do that through eating something or vegging out in front of the TV or cracking a bottle of wine or whatever. Um, and so it's not necessarily like, like the time and how that directly correlates to what we eat. It's just usually the behaviors that revolve around that time of day. Um, so all that to say, if you are hungry after seven or whatever time, and I, I eat dinner after seven, so I always... Um, you know, nighttime snacks are a good thing. And so if you're going to, if you are hungry, definitely eat something. Never don't eat something. Um, and you don't want to wait too long before, um, too long between dinner and going to bed without eating something. Um, but all that to say, if you are hungry at nighttime, eat something. Just make sure that it's something that's going to be satiating and something that's actually going to keep you full and not something that you're just sitting in front of the TV and mindlessly eating. Um, because mindless eating isn't going to be healthy no matter what you're eating. So you can intentionally eat a cupcake and that won't be mindless. Um, I can make a conscious decision to eat a cupcake if I'm with, like, by myself or with friends or whatever. And I think that that's like, that can be a healthy thing, just like I always talk about needing cake just as much as we need kale. But making a conscious, mindful decision to eat 
chips or a cupcake or a cracker bottle wine or whatever and just not doing it mindlessly to where we don't even really know what's going on because that's when food becomes um, more than food. That been, That's when food becomes something to numb out our feelings or that's when food becomes something to fill boredom or something to make us less stressed or less anxious or less lonely or anything like that. So not to get on a totally different tangent of emotional eating, um, but all that to say it's not the time of day that's going to cause something to... Uh, it's not going to cause you to gain weight in some way. Um, it's just usually the behaviors that revolve around that. So all that to say, if you're hungry at nighttime, eat something. Um, just eat something that's going to be satiating. And usually um, I recommend like a combination of carbohydrate and, and fat. So ideally carbohydrate, fat, and protein, but usually fat, fat sources, nuts or nut butter or peanut butter, there's some protein tied in there too. So Fats are great at nighttime because they're satiating. Um, they don't cause an insulin spike right before you're about to go to bed, and they can kind of carry you through the night. So I hope that answers that question. So, so many, I feel like so many lies that we, or I don't want to call it a lie, but so many like myths out there um, revolving around like our body and metabolism and like all these sorts of things um, that make things really warped. So just trying to get back to basics and not make things too complicated on ourselves, I think is the most important thing. Um, okay, so great. I'm only at six and a half minutes. This is awesome. Usually I'm, I'm trying to make things shorter. So last question is my morning routine. So just what's my morning routine, getting out of bed, getting like productive in the morning, all those things. So I'll say my morning routine looks different than it has in the past now. So, and I'm till, still, till, I'm still kind of trying to settle in and figure out a rhythm and what that's going to be for the fall. Just because this year during the master's portion, um, it is so much different than last year when I was in um, just earning my BSN and in this bachelor's degree, kind of the second bachelor's degree program. So the bachelor's degree program was much like busier from like a logistical standpoint. I was up at Columbia five days a week um, in class, you know, many, many hours a day or in clinical um, and so, like, my days were kind of structured. Class started at 8 or 9 o'clock. We go to class until 2 p.m., um, and then we stay after and study for a little bit. I go to the gym. I work out, whatever, um, and then I come home. And then that was Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday were clinical days. And then Friday was usually class from, like, 8 or 9 to 1, study for a little bit, and then the weekend. So this just looks very different. Um, so I'm kind of still trying to figure out a rhythm, which is why all my mornings are a little bit different. Monday I'm in class, and the I have to be at Columbia at 9, so I'm up early being there. I'm usually up early every day, but then Tuesday, Wednesdays I'm in class in the morning time. Um, and then we're taking an online genetics course, so that's really I can do genetics whenever. So Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday leave me wide open in terms of I determine my schedule. So I'm kind of trying to create structure right now with that, with nutshell in school and making that a structured work day to where I don't just feel like, Right now I'm finding myself still in my pajamas and it's noon. And that's because I've had nutshell clients all morning or I've done work all morning, but still I haven't left my house and I'm like reheating coffee in the microwave. So all that to say my, my morning routine is a little touch and go right now, but what that typically looks like every morning, no matter what, unless I have a really early nutshell client, like this morning I had one at 7 a.m. So I got up at 6.30, brewed some coffee, brushed my teeth and like kind of got my head together and settle before that client. What I usually like to do though is I wake up and usually Brittany has coffee going or I am already making coffee. Um, I go make coffee and then um, then I usually drink a cup of coffee and I usually spend like 30 minutes if an hour if I like to like doing quiet time devotional reading my bible journaling. Um, that's usually how my morning starts. Um, because if it doesn't, things can get haywire for the day. So I like need that time in the morning just to kind of like settle and be, um, and kind of like ease into the morning. And then I usually eat breakfast after that. And then I'll usually, I, I almost always have clients in the morning or I eat breakfast and then I head off to campus. Um, so I live about 50 minutes from Columbia now, um, cause I live down in the East Village area and I was, Columbia is like way uptown on the West side. All that to say, it's like they're opposite sides of Manhattan. So then I'll head up and be, be on my way up to class. Um, if I'm here, then I usually have nutshell clients or I jump right into usually doing email. It's 
first thing that I do after I do quiet time and breakfast. Um, and then I will do whatever I need to do for the day. So whether I usually try to split it up, do a little bit of nutshell, do a little bit of homework, a little bit of nutshell, a little bit of school. Um, it doesn't always wind up that way, but my mornings always start off brush teeth, cup of coffee, quiet time, read my Bible, breakfast. Um, I want to sit here and say that I wake up and work out. I don't even want to sit here and say it, but I wish I could say that. I am just not a morning workouter, y'all. And I'm trying to become one but because it makes the rest of my day go a little bit better, but I'm just so not one. I love to wake up in the morning, drink my cup of coffee, and ease into my day. So um, I did go to the gym on Wednesday morning for a cycle class in, at 6.30, and I felt like I conquered the world. So, um, I do not work out in the morning. It might become that way, but it's not that way right now. So, I hope that answers that question. Um, and when I start to figure out more of a rhythm, I'll share that with you guys. But know that if you're the same place that I am, um, and your days don't really have a rhythm, I feel you. I totally feel you. So, if you have any tips for that, bring them my way. Um, things will settle in um, as we get more into the semester. Um, and I just figure out this whole working from home thing. Um, so, alrighty. That's it. I don't want to keep blabbering about that. If you have questions, send them my way. I'm going to try to pick up Q&A Friday for that to be a more consistent thing. Um, and in the meantime, have a great weekend, guys. So, have some fun things planned here in the city with friends and, and all of that. And it's supposed to be beautiful. So, I hope wherever you are, it's gorgeous. You're, you enjoy it. You rest. You, you relax. Um, and of course, please see, eat something awesome. Alright, bye guys.